Hello there, sword friends. Today I'm going to tell you about this sword right here. It is the Fidest Zan Bamboo Katana, or at least that's what I'm going to call it because its actual name is quite a bit longer. It is the Fidestazan KHON223 Japanese Samurai Bamboo Real Katana Sword High Carbon 1095 Steel Blade Full Tang 40 Inch. It's a mouthful, but I would say Bamboo Katana is what I'm going to call it. Anyway, this sword is roughly $90 at the recording of this video, or at least at the time of the recording of this video, and there is one left in stock, if you would believe what Fidestazan has to say. So hopefully, if you want one and they are out of stock, they will make more, I'm not sure. But uh, at the moment, $90, one left. I'll be linking that in the description down below if you're interested in picking one up. The other bit that you should know before I get into the review is that this is a review sample. It was sent to me for free. If you think that makes me biased, you know at the start. And I am also not going to be pushing this sword to failure. I did use it, I whacked it into cardboard tubes and did things that are not exactly gentle, but I'm not pushing it to failure. However, if you're curious about Fidesz on how well their swords hold up, generally speaking, I did test a different one to failure already. I'll link that in the description down below. It was a katana, I think it was Probably a different steel, maybe the same steel, I'm not sure, but you get to see one of their blades push to failure if that's something you're interested in, and it gives you some idea of how well they hold up. And just at the beginning, I'll tell you if you're looking at buying this one, do know the handle is constructed differently. I don't doubt that the blade is constructed in a very similar good way. I did dumb things with this one and it held up and it's straight and sharp and didn't seem to have any major flaws, but the handle, while it's still together and while it has given me no trouble, I would say if I did the same level of dumb things I did with this sword with the Fidestazan Katana that I pushed to failure, uh, the handle, just by the nature of its construction, would probably split apart a little quicker. And it's something to be aware of if you're buying any sword that resembles Shira Sire as like this hidden stick kind of thing. The blade is basically two wooden scales, two wooden slats that are kind of profile, hollowed out around where the tang would be and then glued together. Now, I don't know if this one is filled with epoxy. I suspect it's not, but if it is, I guess different problems, you can't take it apart. Uh, nevertheless, if if it's just two wooden scales and there's no silk round around it, no samegawa, nothing else adding to the structure of the handle, it's easier for them, I guess, to come apart. It doesn't have any fuchikashira uh, on the end, nothing to kind of hold these scales together. So if I do really dumb hard things, or if you do really dumb hard things with it, it's possible that it would split apart and you would have an uncomfortable day. So that's one of the reasons I did not choose to break this sword. So keep that in mind if you opt to get one. But I digress. I pushed another sword. I'll link it in the description down below if you're interested in watching it. Uh, this video is going to be mostly bits, bobs, fits, features. I will also use it. You'll see that and then I'll talk about if I think it's worth it or not at the end. Um, so without further ado, I'll get into the review. Bits, bobs, fit features. I typically start with the kashra, the, uh, the end bit up here, the pommel, but in this case there is not one. It is one handle shaped like a bamboo stick that leads into a scabbard which is shaped like a bamboo stick. So I would be remiss if I didn't kind of back up and look at the sword in its totality and more or less I think they've done a really good job for a $90 item to look like a bamboo stick. This looks like it's been carved out or pressed or something like that but either way texturally it's a little different and it does look like a bamboo stick and it has like a, a kind of a subtle gentle look. Now in terms of its appearance when I see this I think of walking stick. It's not tall enough for me to use as a walking stick and if I held it up at the top here it's very likely that eventually, while the retention is good right now, where this habaki is, which I'll, I'll take out, there's a habaki like you would typically see on a Japanese sword. Eventually, this kind of friction fit is probably going to wear out if I used it as a cane. So, you'd probably want to hold it somewhere up here. And if I hold it somewhere up here, it really doesn't do me any good as a walking stick. It wouldn't, it's also a little too heavy as like a riding crop or something. So um, I'm not sure other than the novelty of carrying it around what, what it's supposed to look like, maybe give you something to lean on, but I wouldn't advocate using it as a cane. Uh, anyway, bits, buffs, fit features, <laughs> moving, moving back. There's no kasha or anything like that. You do make out the seam here where you can make out that basically it is uh, two scales, two slats of wood that are pressed in. There's two makugi pegs that are here and they're very tastefully kind of sanded in so I don't see them quite a lot. And all of the bamboo pieces don't have any sharp ledges on it. It has a satin overall look to it, which is nice. And I, nothing bites my hand. Everything is relatively gentle looking. Everything is sanded and finished reasonably well. It's not immaculate, but again, it's $90. And for 90 bucks, I think you aesthetically get quite, quite a lot here. Anyway, if I move up to the where the where the blade meets the uh, scabbard, there is a slight little plastic 
piece here. It, it doesn't look like horn to me. It looks like some sort of plastic. It could be some other material and that denotes where the blade is or where the, the seam is for the blade to come out. So if you pick it up off the ground, you know which end you're supposed to grab it from because conceivably if you picked it up rapidly from the other side, it could come out and the blade could fall out and that would be, that would be unfortunate. So it gives you the area to aim for as you're picking it up. What it doesn't have though are little scales or slats or grooves or something that gives you some sort of physical indication or visual indication of which side the blade is on. Um, it's indexed in such a way where one side is slightly wider than the other, maybe, I'm guessing, but it's not really easy to tell. By contrast, this is a Zatoichi stick made by a different company. And you can see that there are two little slats here. And what it does is it tells me these little slats, these little slashes are supposed to be on the outside of me. And if they're on the outside of me, then the blade is, is here, right? So if it's in my left hand and I feel this, I know right where the blade is because I can feel that that's, I know that my orientation, they're supposed to be on the outside of me. And so I know where the blade is up. And if I'm holding it in my left hand and I draw it with my right, I know, I know where my edge is. And I don't know that here. Now I could carve them into the handle, but this satin look on here would likely be diminished. There's some sort of finish on here and it could be cleaned up, but I think you would have to add them. And it'd be nice if there was some sort of groove, something in here to allow me to tell which way the, the blade orientation was in the scabbard because there's not a visual indication of it, or at least not one that I'm picking up on. Other notes about the handle, there are these bamboo risers here. Now they run throughout the sword, but um, they do feel nice to grip and they add some additional retention. So if I try to thrust with it, if I try to move with it, uh, my hand is really holding on to these things and they do add what little bit of tactile sensation is there. The surface is satin and I, I don't necessarily think it was super slippery. I don't recall it moving around in my hand, but conceivably this could get rather slippery if your hands are wet and these little bamboo risers give you something to hold on to in one hand, in one hand or two. Now that said, there is not much other than these to keep you from riding up the blade. And on Japanese swords, it's not uncommon to have the blade not sharpened for a few inches up the blade. This is not sharpened for maybe half an inch or so before it gets sharper than I'd want to hold tight on with my hand. So if you're doing any kind of thrusting, there's a risk that you're going to slide up the the blade and and ouchy yourself pretty good anyway uh, moving down to the scabbard worth noting that the koiguchi at the moment is tensioned right but there is a little bit of rattle here it's not a huge amount but noticeable enough and it goes kind of both directions so if you're walking around with this it rattles in such a way that somebody's going to know there's a little more than meets the eye to to your little walking stick uh, also worth noting though that the color transition between the handle and the scabbard is not too bad. Uh, it'd be really easy to have the wood patterning uh, change in such a way that it would really stand out as two different pieces of wood. And while I can see that the pattern does change, the kind of the pattern in the wood, the, uh, the grain structure and whatnot changes, it's not so off-putting that it looks like a completely different piece of wood. I mean, there, there's some element of it, but not, not really a lot overall. The two pieces they chose are reasonably good. The other bit with the scabbard is that it's consistent, or it's basically made the same way, but it has a koiguchi area here, which is offering some additional structure, um, but there's nothing else on the kojiri end, this, this end down here. So if you're using this again as a cane and it's bumping on the floor, that satin finish is gonna be diminished relatively quickly, and it's possible it could split, split apart. That would be the nervous bit to me here, because there's basically just wood glue holding this stuff together, and typically on a Japanese sword, there's a little bit more than that going on to to add some some potential points that would hold the sword together. Not only the Koiguchi, it usually has a Kojiri that's horn that keeps it from kind of bopping the wood on the floor. Um, sometimes you have other areas around here, rattan, samegawa, something to, to hold the kind of the business end of the, the scabbard together a little bit. Not that that necessarily happens. There's also lacquer in a thick variety that isn't necessarily adding a whole lot, but is some additional reinforcement. This one is, is just the glue. So if you bop somebody in the face with it, I imagine it wouldn't, wouldn't last very long. That's not the point though. The, the scabbard overall, I would think you'd probably want something that would be quiet. That would be the main concern. And for $90, your expectations have to be tempered a little bit and you could stuff cotton balls down there and they would probably absorb a lot of the rattle and sound. Um, you might have a problem later with rusting, but at the same time, it would mitigate some of the, the sound of rattling around. 
Now I'm going to talk about the blade, and this has some stuff going on, which I think is pretty impressive for a sword in, 90, in the $90 price point. One, uh, it has some profile taper, which you can see here. It's minor, but there's also some distal taper, and it really tends to go down a little steeper towards the, the latter third of the blade. And I think that's adding what nimbleness I'm feeling in the blade, which, which is honestly pretty stout. There's not a lot of counterweight towards the, the hilt area here. If I get two hands on it, it feels nimble, but with one hand, it feels actually not so comfortable. It feels a little slippery, like I have to white knuckle it, um, but some attempt has been made to make this sword feel good, more than I would have expected in based on the budget. At $145, which is the retail price of this sword without any kind of sale. Now, I've only seen it on sale, but at $145, I would still say this is a rare thing to see in swords. Most of the time, there's, there's really no distal taper whatsoever, um, and so having it Having it profiled well here is, is a bit of a surprise. Other bits to note about the blade, the surfaces are reasonably clean. The bohe is also not full of ripples, which is kind of a surprise. This blade is actually ground reasonably well for, for the money. I'm, I'm somewhat surprised. Uh, but there is not anything else going on in the surface of the steel. So not that I'd expect it, but it's a through hardened 1095 blade and they haven't made any effort to sand on or etch on any kind of hamon. I appreciate that, but there's also no differential hardening to look at, no uh, hada on the surface of the steel. Don't expect it for $90, don't expect it for $145, but worth noting that it's not there. It's worth noting though that the bohe are terminated in about the right spot or in the same spot. And again, for, for, for what I'm seeing in the profile and the grind lines on the blade, it's actually really, really quite nice for the money. Also worth noting, it's reasonably sharp. I wouldn't call it super sharp, um, it's not obscenely sharp, but it, it came sufficiently sharp and sharp enough where I wouldn't want wouldn't to hold on to it too tight. Now, I did do some cutting as well, and it's worth talking about that. Uh, I don't necessarily know how to use this sword. I do study Japanese swordsmanship, and while this is Japanese sword-inspired, uh, it's not super, it's not as familiar as a katana. So, in whacking bottles and stuff, it's sharp enough to do it. But I find that the grip is just a little slippery in my hand, so if I hold this grip, and twist it, it can move in my hand. If I really kind of clench down on this, hold it as hard as I can, I can still turn it. Um, so you can kind of get the idea that this grip is just a little bit slippery with whatever coating they've put on it. This is something that a person could remedy themselves though. If you sanded this, if you put additional grooves, slats, something to give you your hand a little bit more purchase, a little bit more grip, it would probably feel better and you, it wouldn't feel so loosey-goosey, you wouldn't have to hold onto it so tight. So my edge alignment was probably off quite a bit and it cut, the blade didn't damage, it didn't chip, it didn't bend, it didn't roll, and all of that I would say would be acceptable for a $90 sword. Not acceptable, not ideal, but happens for $90 swords. That's really a budget piece, and if you do bad cuts like me, it's really very likely that you will have a bent sword at the end of it. That's not, not uncommon, and so I was surprised that I didn't see it here. It suggests that it's reasonably well heat treated as well. Uh, I wasn't necessarily impressed with the cutting performance, but this is not... I would say that the Fides on Katana that I tested uh, did a much better job cutting, and I'm a lot more familiar with that kind of sword. So maybe judge my cutting a little bit more on that sword than this one. Uh, but I digress. Point is that it did cut. It had a decent edge. The edge held up. The overall blade held up, even though I didn't really put it through crazy paces. If you want to see, again, a sword that goes through those kind of paces, take a look at the Fides on Katana that I tested. In a different video, I'll, I'll link it, as I mentioned, in the description down below. All right, sword friends, it's time for me to answer the question, do I personally think it's worth it or not? And in short, yes, I think you get a lot for $90 here. Now, I've had some criticisms about it. It's a little squirrely in the hand, and then, you know, but it's also $90 or $145 if it's not on sale. And either way, I think you actually get quite a bit for your money here. Uh, the blade didn't bend. I didn't torture test it, but it didn't bend, and it certainly could have. Uh, it certainly ha didn't where other $90 swords have bent. Also worth noting that these grooves and whatnot, while they might not necessarily be super practical, they do look good and they are overall um, probably not easy to do. And the blade incorporates some element of distal taper and effort in it that I honestly didn't expect. And so uh, seeing those things present for $90, it gives me the impression that it's actually an overall good value and gives you some place to start if you're looking to, you know, be a do-it-yourselfer. For $90, you don't have to break the bank and you can maybe afford to play around with some things where you, you might be nervous on swords with a, a higher price point. You could add uh, something to the grip to make it a little bit more robust and a little bit more ergonomic. You could maybe address some of the issues yourself and still have a fun, neat sword. Um, you could also just sand all this down and, you know, make make a different looking sword if, if that's a thing that you're after. Uh, do bear in mind, though, if you are looking for something that is like a Zatoichi stick, note that you're going to have trouble adjusting the size of the sword. This is a katana size blade, and if you can see it in contrast to how 
wide it is in contrast to the Zatoichi style blade below it. I've referenced this throughout the video, but um, Zatoichi's sword is usually a little thinner and that would be something a little harder to grind down and make this sword into. Um, that said, if you're looking for a, a thick, girthy sword or you just don't care because it's $90, either way, I think you get a lot for your money with this sword. So um, those are my impressions. I would caution though that if you are just looking for a sword to have fun with in your backyard and this is something that strikes you but you're only going to spend $90 once on a sword, I'd encourage you to get something a little bit more durable, <laughs> something that if you make a bad strike into a thing that you didn't expect um, stands a less likely chance to have the handle explode and is constructed in a more robust and, and swordy kind of way. Uh, that said, if that isn't you and this is a luxury item or you feel comfortable enforcing it, then disregard, I would still just say, if it's your only sword, I would encourage you to get something a little bit more um, that you're going to feel a little bit more in control of and that offers some additional assurances. But uh, that's not to say that this sword did it to me. It overall held up with what I did. I digress, though. Uh, that's all I have for you. Hopefully all that stuff makes sense. Hopefully it's been entertaining. I do want to offer a special thanks again to Vedest Design for sending the sword my way. I had a lot of fun playing with it. Sorry it took me so long to get done. Uh, that's all I've got, though, everyone. Cheers, and thanks for watching.